Palki Sharma turned heads with her show Gravitas at Vion. In the last 6 years, she has broken many stereotypes in her shows. She has questioned the world order and where India is placed. She has challenged the hegemony of the West in international trade and business, and her extensive coverage on China's oppressive regime has captured global audience. Reaching new heights at first post, Palki Sharma talks to the print about what goes into making her shows, how she handles the criticism coming her way, and how newsrooms in India can change. Thank you so much, ma'am, for talking to us. Uh, tell me about uh, your journey. You you joined first post. You, your show started in January, and since then it has picked up again. Uh, you've moved from beyond to here. Tell me about the show and how do you conceptualize it? Uh, we had a lot of ideas that we wanted to build on. One was obviously uh, giving India's point of view on what's happening in the world. Uh, the second was giving people value for their time. If you're going to watch news, why do a lot of people not watch news? That's the refrain that we don't watch news. We don't, you know. So if if you're going to watch that one story in a day or give me 10 minutes of your time or 15 or ideally 50, which is the length of my show, what should I do to make it so compelling? And uh, like I've said in the past, we cannot be entertainers. We are journalists. So how do we tell a story that holds the attention of the audience? What do we add? How do we add value to the information that you may already have? Uh, so those were the sort of boxes that we wanted to tick as we went along. And we had some guardrails in place on how to check our facts and how to attribute and uh, given our resources and the, the, the limits that are there. How do we uh, find a collaborative way of, you know, using whatever is available to us to build a story that, that uh, holds. And uh, when we started, we weren't sure that we would get the kind of response that we did. Uh, but I'm glad we, we took that chance because it has worked very well for us and it has opened a completely new avenue for news content uh, because we know that there is a market and not just in India. The more surprising bit was that there was a big market outside India of non-Indians. Yeah, I wanted to talk about your audience. You said a lot of your uh, viewers are not from India. Tell us more about that. How has this, uh, how has this traffic been diverted to your show? I really don't know, <laughs> but I can't complain. Uh, we are uh, a good chunk of our audience is based in the US, Indians and non-Indians. Uh, we have solid viewership in England, in Canada, in the Philippines, interestingly, which is also uh, a country that that is very heavily into you know social media and internet, and their, the penetration is very high in general. Uh, but it works for us, uh, and many other parts of the world. And we've uh, we found that 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 some of our stories resonate with people in in Sri Lanka, even in Japan, which I thought was a relatively closed society. Uh, we found people in a metro station walking up to us, looking at the mic, and saying, "We watch this, or we've seen this report." Or Taiwan, because we do a lot of stories related to China. So yes, we found our audience in various uh, pockets and regions, and. Uh, it's been a revealing experience because while I knew that people may be interested in, in global affairs in India, a lot of uh, Hindi channels and Hindi newspapers do it very religiously. So mm -hmm. in tier two, tier three cities, a lot of students uh, have been associated with us. And uh, I, I went to some MBA colleges. I went to the to IIM Ahmedabad last month. And a lot of them walked up to me and said that we watch your shows and, mm -hmm. and prepared for an interview. Uh, you always uh, maintain this very strong stand that we want to present India's side of the story because what uh, the way we are looking at the world is through a Western lens and you want to change that. Um, how challenging has it been for you? And uh, do you get a lot of flack for this? No, I don't get flack for this except for some quarters where no matter what I did, I would get flack perhaps from. Uh, I think there is a, there is an audience that wants to hear the, the for instance the Chandrayaan we all saw it happen we all saw it live and yet there is a narrative being built that it was a fake landing I mean how how is that okay and 
I did a story on that and I said it there and I'll say it again that we need to take control of our stories because otherwise we will be we will be trapped in someone else's version of our truth. And we are a country of 1.4 billion people. Why should we let that happen? Do you think this take of yours uh, that we want to control our own stories is that classifying you as a type of journalist where a lot of journalists are called that oh you're just following the government uh, agenda and you're just uh, you know towing the government line you're very uh, anti uh, you're basically not uh, questioning the establishment do you feel I'm talking about India and not the establishment and they're two different things uh, and this is a very simplistic uh, sort of understanding of what we do uh, the moon landing was not about a government or a or you know it, it was India's achievement have we not called it India's achievement Hmm. And there are, besides this, like there are other issues that you've touched upon. And uh, do you feel that uh, taking this stand uh, get, gets you this kind of criticism? For the See, like I said, it's uh, my what I do is not defined by the criticism or will not change because of the. I am all for constructive criticism, but I have been around long enough to know what is constructive and what is criticism for the sake of it. So uh, I believe in the stories that I do. Um, and I stand by them. Hmm. There are lots of topics that you touch upon which are not really covered, um, which are not, which you said did not get a lot of hits uh, as you had expected them to be. One uh, such story is the abortion uh, in the US, the issue that you talked about. Can you tell us about this? Like when you sit and your team sits and you all decide a topic, do you uh, have any statistic of uh, kind of assessing a filtering process where you say that, OK, uh, we should talk about this because this is the trending topic or this is what's being talked about? Yeah, I think we operate in a world where there is way too much data that I can handle. And there is too much data crunching happening on, you know, this is the trend and this is what's working and this is the hashtag that should work and this is what has stickiness in, in marketing lingo. Uh, as a policy, I have tried to steer clear of that because it does not make a lot of sense to me. Um, while you have to understand the larger trends and the mood, you know that when a Chandrayaan landing is happening, that is the big story. That is what you want to do because everyone wants to see what's happening. That much we understand. But on a day to day, on a more granular level, we pick stories that we feel good about, that we want to do. Because if you fall into this trap of, you know, today this is trending and this is going to work, then you're letting someone else set the agenda for you. And that, according to me, is not a very, I mean, so far it has, what the, 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 the formula that we follow has worked for us. Um, we, but, but because we've done it for so many years, I know that there are certain stories that will get us a lot of hits. And then there are others which will not. Stories that typically talk about women's issues do not find a lot of takers simply because an overwhelming percentage of the news audience is male and beyond a point they don't care. And does that bother you when you see that a large uh, part of your audience is male and they don't really bother about these issues? It doesn't uh, bother. I mean, this is a it's a it's a it's a reflection of our society, not just in India, everywhere. That's that's how, if you look at the news consumption patterns, it is 40 plus male. So that's that's what it is. Does that mean we stop doing the stories? I don't think so. Because even if we've, we've forced or we've been able to trigger some sort of thinking in the mind of one person who's watching us, and a lot of young people watch our show. So if we are helping shape their opinion, on gender pay gap, on abortion, on a woman's right to her body and her choices, then I think it's a story worth doing, even if it's not getting one million views. Mm -hmm. So that's that's where we start from. Right. You also talk about a lot of fundamental changes that newsrooms in India require. Uh, you have said that there are leadership uh, issues. There are no, not good enough leaders in the media. Would you Can you elaborate a bit on this? What are the issues uh, that you feel need uh, fixing in Indian media houses? And especially for women journalists. We should have more women leaders to start with. They will be more... Uh, 
in tune with with what their teams are thinking and what their challenges are and i'm not saying that all male leaders are anti women uh, i have worked with some very good bosses uh, like i told you earlier uh, but a larger environment needs to be more receptive to the demands of a of a working woman uh, and that is not limited to media i think that is everywhere uh in the media we work extreme hours we work very long hours we have a lot of travel so our challenges may look more pronounced but i think for any working woman anywhere in the world uh some some challenges remain common and universal so uh that can be a larger leadership issue not limited to the media uh in the media uh, my limited point is that we need to find a way to retain good talent we need to relook at our business models we need to ensure that we can do justice to the people who join the workforce and give them uh, what they deserve for what they bring to the table so yes that is something that that we need to work on and uh, one last question we've always seen this calm composed bulky on camera is that uh, do you get nervous do you uh, worry about stories do you like any other reporter do you also of course i do i am nervous about a whole lot of things um, yes i have a very solid team you just saw there i got hassled about something and someone had an answer so they are very very good uh, that support is uh, fantastic but yes i do rethink a lot of things that i do or say malki sharma has created a niche for herself Within 7 months of launching Vantage, the show on YouTube channel of First Post, the channel's viewership rose to 1000% and the channel's subscribers crossed 2 million. Her take on global stories from an Indian lens has become the USP. In Noida with Manisha Mondal, this is Sonal Matharu for the print.